Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Open your heart and mind as God's word comes to you today. Introducing Pastor David Fadi. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings. The first thing the Word of God shows us is who we are. Then it shows us who we are meant to be. Now the Word. Ephesians 1 verse 13 and 14. The Bible says... In whom we have trusted, in whom we have trusted, in whom ye also trusted, that's what the Bible says, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of faith, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also, after you believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. In whom you also trusted. Start from verse 12 because verse 12 brought us here. That we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. So we who first, we who first trusted, talks about the Jews who first believed. In whom you also, and the you also, who, are, who is he referring to? The Gentiles, which includes you and I. So he said, you also trusted after you heard the word of truth which is the gospel of salvation the process of being saved is that you will hear the word of truth which is the gospel of salvation uh, he said how will they uh, Romans 10 10 says uh, let, me, let me quickly go there I don't want to quote it wrong Romans chapter 10 from verse 9, he said, If you will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved if you shall believe and confess. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, Whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. Verse 13 now. He said, for whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For how shall they call on him whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without what? A preacher. All right, so go back to our text. So the, the protocol to salvation is that the gospel is preached. Go back to our text. The gospel is preached. So he said, you trusted the same way we trusted, only after you have heard the word of truth. And what is the word of truth? The gospel of what? Of your salvation. That is the gospel that saved you. In whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So for everyone who believes, the next thing that happened to you is that you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. And this is where we are having our lesson today. To understand what does it mean to be sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Then verse 14. That Holy Spirit of promise, the Bible said, He is the guarantee. Old King James says, He is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. Another interpretation says, he is the down payment of our inheritance. And we are going to explain all of that. Until the redemption of the purchased possession 
to the praise of his glory. Let me first of all explain that verse. Then we'll break it little by little. Then we add flesh to it. What he's saying is that after you believe, as soon as you believe, at the instant of salvation, something happened to you. The Holy Spirit comes into your heart. And that Holy Spirit is called the seal of your what? Of your salvation. He is the seal. So every believer has the Holy Spirit in him as a seal. So we are going to learn what is the implication of of the, of the Holy Spirit as a seal in the life of a believer. Then he now moved on to say that this Holy Spirit is the earnest, the down payment of our inheritance. When we say down payment, what does he mean? Uh, many people in Nigeria may not understand the concept of down payment. But those people in the Western world who have a financial system of payment whereby you don't pay for everything you want out of your pocket. So you want to buy a house. They don't even expect you to pay it all at once. That is a financial protocol of that payment. So you make a first installment when you make that first installment, no other person can buy the house again. You have not finished payment, but you have made a huge payment which guarantees that you are the owner. Even though you have not finished payment, so if it is a mortgage, a house mortgage, you even move into the house. If it is a phone you want to buy, like my, my, my sister-in-law was telling me that I used two years to pay for my iPhone because at the instant she just went and made a down payment, they gave her the iPhone. In fact, she told me that sometimes what you bought have even spot before you finish payment. So she said she used two years, but the, mo the money you paid at the beginning is what is called what? Down payment. So the Holy Spirit is the earnest, which is the same word as down payment payment of what? Of our inheritance until a time where you are going to now get it all. So the Holy Spirit in us is the down payment of God that at the end of the day we will be the, the, the purchase will be finalized. And I'm going to show you what purchase will now be finalized. What will now happen at the end? What is this period called until the redemption of the purchased possession? Many years ago, I watched a drama. And the drama portrays this. And the drama showed a man who wanted to marry and they pictured it in the Fulani culture. I don't know which culture was that anyway. But the guy had to be subjected to a lot of rigor if he want to marry this lady. So they were, give, they were to give him 39 strokes of the cane, which he endured. They did all of that. Then after that, he married the woman. But he did not consummate the marriage. So he did not have any affair with the woman. He just did the marriage and told the woman, let me quickly travel. Let me go and prepare where I'm going to take you to. But as he married the woman, but he has not what? Consummated the marriage. Can someone else marry that woman? No, because the family had collected all that is to be collected to be married. That is how we are in our relationship, our marital relationship with God. The Holy Spirit is the down payment in us. And I'm going to show you how that the Bible says the Holy Spirit is the earnest, which is down payment. 
And I'm going to show us how the Holy Spirit in the life of Jesus, the Bible says Jesus was given the Holy Spirit without measure. But the Holy Spirit we have is earnest. Give this earnest to us in different translations. Let me show you what I'm trying to say. I'm going to explain all of this to us tonight. But I want to give you a general overview. Then we break it down. This signet from God. The signet represents seal. And they said the seal is who? The Holy Spirit. So instead of this signet, you can put there, this Holy Spirit from God is the what? The first installment. On what's coming. So, everything that God promised us that we are going to inherit in Christ Jesus, how are we sure that we are going to inherit it? The Holy Spirit that was given to us is the first installment of those inheritance that we are going to enjoy. Many of them that uh, uh, Dennis shared with us last week. The things that are to come. The life after now. The Holy Spirit today is what makes us believe that, oh, true. All these other things that they said will also do what? We are going to inherit it. On what's coming? A reminder that we will get everything God has what? Planned for us. Give it to us again in another translation. NLT, NIV, uh, Amplified. The Holy Spirit is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession. So the, you have already been redeemed. Are we together? Hello, you believe that you have, how many of you believe that you have been redeemed? But they are talking about another redemption. So what is this redemption? We are going to see it today. If we have already been redeemed, what is this redemption? Because we are God's what? Possession. So what is this redemption to the place of his glory? NLT. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this, so we will praise his name. It is just like a man giving a woman a wedding ring. The wedding ring sells the woman is symbolic that all the promises I have made, I'm going to make it good to you. Take this first. That is why some women, they don't joke with the wedding. In fact, they will tell you, I can decide to wear slippers on my wedding day. But my wedding ring must be very expensive. Very expensive. I don't care how much you want to. If you like, sell yourself. But because it is a proof to me that all these things you are saying, you will do it. I will take you around the world. I will take you to the places that you've never been before. Yeah, show them now. So if you really take me around the world, I start with this ring. Give me a ring. Every time I see that ring, it reminds me of the promises you have made, and that's why, in fact, when when they want to join, that's what they will say. Uh, with uh, this ring, which is about the promises I have made between this. So it's about the promises. So the Holy Spirit is that which God gives gave us to tell us that every other thing that I have promised you that will not come to pass in this world, in this earthly realm, will still come to pass. Because there are some of the promises that God made to us that will not come to pass in this earthly realm. I hope you know. Yes. There are some of them that will not come to pass in this earthly realm. There are some of those inheritances that we are going to enjoy in the life after. So how will I know that the life after, I'm going to enjoy it? There is something you must do for me in the life now 
that tells me that in the life after what you promise you're going to do. So let's get to business. So we first of all look at the seal that believers are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Another scripture that corroborates this scripture is 2 Corinthians chapter 1 from verse 20 to 22. And you must know, as I'm teaching you Bible study, that any truth that you would uphold as a doctrine of the word of God must have witnesses in the Bible. What do I mean? The Bible says, out of what? Two or three witnesses. The truth shall be what? Established. So, if you say, oh, the Holy Spirit is a seal, and we only read it in the book of Ephesians, it is not enough to hold on to it. You must find, is it written somewhere else in the scripture? And it is. For all the promises of God in him, which is, what is in him? Who is that him? Huh? In Christ, all the promises of God to us who are in Christ Jesus, they are what? Yes, and in him they are what? Amen. The word yes means so shall it be. The word amen means what? So shall it be. So it is yes and what? Amen. No iota of doubt, no shadow of turning. As he has said it, so will it be. To the glory of God through us. Yes, verse 21. Now, he who establishes us with you in Christ has anointed us, and, and has anointed us is God. Yes. Who also has sealed us and given us the Spirit in our heart as what? A guarantee. First installment, earnest, down payment, as a guarantee. So let's look at what it means to be sealed. We said that to be sealed is first the symbol of a finished transaction. A what? A finished symbolically where they use the word seal or when something is sealed it is a proof of a finished transaction act chapter 20 verse 28 so in those in the uh, olden days in the Roman Empire in the ancient civilization when a transaction is concluded the seal is more like a signature that you put on it. And I've told us that the way seals are, sometimes they are made, they, are, they, are, they make them into rings. So the ring will have your own inscription at the back of it. So they will pour wax in that place. Then you will use that ring, that impression, and impress upon that what? That wax. So once the wax gets dry, you know that any distortion in that wax, you will know that somebody has what? Tampered with it. It's just like egg. You know, it is easy for you, if your parents fry meat, to steal from the meat. But how can you steal boiled egg? How can you chop small from boiled egg? <laughs> if they boil the egg, any distortion, everybody will know that somebody what? Got here. So that's how the seal is. They'll pour the wax. So once you put your... You see that it's like a stamp or it is put on your ring, whatever it is. When you put it on it, any distortion in that image shows that somebody, somebody has tampered with it. So it shows that this person has signed it. The same way today, you have your signature. It's like a signature. After you have finished the deal, the two of you have done the deal, one thing that shows that you have actually accepted this deal is what? You sign. So, Acts chapter 20 and verse 20, the Bible says, Therefore, take heed to yourself and to all the flocks 
among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseer to shepherd them, the church of God, which he did what? Which he did what? Purchased by his blood. So the Holy Spirit is a seal. And we said that the seal is what? A symbol of finalized transaction. You have been purchased by the blood of Jesus. So the proof that you have been purchased is that the person that purchased you signed that this thing was what? Was finalized. Remember Jesus on the cross. One of the seven statements that he made during his crucifixion. One of it is what? It is what? Finished. And it is finished there. It was the statement or is a business language that he used. It's like the transaction was what? Completed. The transaction of your redemption. Let's see Galatians. Chapter 4. Verse 4 to 6. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem the law. I said a transaction. Redemption means that you were mine because of one thing or the other. They took you from me. I was owing them. And remember in the Bible, the Bible said there was a man who died as a priest. And who died broke? Who died indebted? In the days of is it Elisha now? Yes. So the creditors came to the widow and said, we are going to take your sons. They will be slaves. Till they walk. If they were owing maybe two million. And the average salary of a laborer, annual salary, is... Uh, Let's say 400,000. So how many years will, will one child work to be able to pay back? How many years? Ah, people are not doing mass. They are owing 2 million. Annual salary is 500,000. How many years? Like 400,000 rather. How many years? 5 years. So which means these children will be yours for what? 5 years. When, if before five years, maybe after they have worked for two years, how much have they paid? 800,000. How much is remaining? 1.2 million. Somehow, I got 1.2 million. And I now went back to the woman or the person that I was owing. I now pay what? 1.2 million. To do what? To get my children back. That money that is paid is called what? The price of redemption. The price you pay to buy back what was originally yours that you lost or that was taken away from you legally. It could be a house. It could be anything. So, what the Bible says to redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the what? The adoptions as what? As sons. So that entire redemption process, where we were delivered from the power of darkness and we were translated into the kingdom of his dear son because originally we were supposed to be in the kingdom of God but by our disobedience we became a servant of the devil. We were in darkness. So God coming to take us back from darkness you have to pay the price that is worth. That price is what? Called the price of redemption. So when redemption is concluded, it's also what? A transaction. So the Holy Spirit in you as a believer is a proof that the price of your redemption was what? Fully paid. The Holy Spirit in you is validating that you have been redeemed. How you know that you are redeemed is not because you grew taller. 
How you know you are redeemed is not even because your behavior changed. How you know you are redeemed is not any external thing. The proof that the redemption was finalized on your behalf is that the Holy Spirit comes into your spirit. You receive the Holy Spirit. And don't confuse that with speaking in tongues. Hello? Don't confuse that with what? Speaking in tongues. The Holy Spirit comes to you at the point of salvation to seal. It is at the point where the transaction was what? Concluded. You, I cannot pay you now. I've paid you all the money. Then I now wait for three years before I sign. Is that what happens? You sign immediately. So you receiving the Holy Spirit is instantaneous at the point of salvation. What happens that we now start speaking in tongues is what we refer to as the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which you couldn't have had if you did not receive the Holy Spirit in your spirit in the first instance. It's the earnest of the Spirit, the, the token of the Holy Spirit. You have it. Every believer has it. And it is to show, we are talking about seal. And we say seal is a proof of what? finalized transaction verse 6 and because you are sons he was talking about redemption after the price of redemption was paid you are now adopted as a son all of this transaction was concluded then how do you know that that transaction was concluded God has sent forth the spirit of his son the spirit of his son is also the spirit, is what? Is who? The Holy Spirit. And he sent it forth into your heart, crying what? Abba, Father. So the Holy Spirit is in you. Always reminding you that God is your Father. The Holy Spirit is in you. Always reminding you that who? God is your Father. That he finished the transaction of your redemption. So you are no longer under the bondage of that guy that bought you, which is sin and death. But you are now below, you now belong to God. The proof of that payment, the receipt of that payment, the proof of that finalized transaction is what? Holy Spirit, where? in you, in your spirit. The Holy Spirit in your spirit. Crying what? Abba, Father. I think I'm going to explain that maybe as we move on. But it's crying in our hearts, saying Abba, Father. Romans chapter 8, verse 15 to 16. So what, what are the transactions that we have considered? Redemption, the other one is what? Adoption. All those things are transactions. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. Let's start, okay. For you have not received the spirit of, uh, let's start from verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of what? Bondage. Listen. So when you were under the slavery of sin and of what? Of death and of the devil. What spirit is operating in you? The spirit of what? Bondage. Because you are in bondage. The Bible now says, but you have received a new spirit, which is the spirit of what? Adoption. So everybody in the world has a spirit working in them. It is the spirit that is working in you that determines whose you are. It is what? 
The spirit that is working in you that determines whose you are. If it is the spirit of God, which is the spirit of Jesus, which is the spirit of adoption that is working in you, who are you? You are a child of God. If it is the spirit of bondage, the spirit of fear, the spirit of sin and of death that is working in you, who are you? You are a child of the devil. If you doubt me, Ephesians chapter 2. Let me quickly show you. Ephesians 2 verse 1. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin. Verse 2. In which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now walks in what? In the sons of disobedience. So there is a spirit at work in them. Verse 3. Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desire. So what is making us lost, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, is because the spirit of the world, the spirit of the power of darkness is at work in us. That is why you would see a man. Oh God. I saw a man when I was in secondary school. He was smoking. Smoking cigarettes. He has already emaciated to the he, he was looking like a corpse, like a skeleton. <laughs> and he was this smoke. That is beyond him. There is what? A spirit at work. There is also a spirit at work in us that when even the world treats us in a particular way, we forgive. We love. We have patience. We have endurance. We have long suffering. There is a spirit that is at work. So I wrote in my notes, the Holy Spirit is the DNA of God. The Holy Spirit is who? Is the DNA of God. So, if a man, listen to this, if there is a question of paternity, who wants this child? I once saw a video and it happened, and there were about four men. Who let claim, who let claim, not a particular girl? The girl actually lived with one as the father. And other three men who said, I was the one, I was the one, because the woman, of course, for that to happen, that means the woman must really, really be promiscuous. And the, the, the case was brought to the court. There is no way on earth that the court can determine who owns the child. There is no way also a woman herself, if she's that promiscuous, can determine who is the father of my child. If three men slept with her the same day, she cannot tell who exactly owns the child. So the only way they would check who owns the child is that whoever is the father of the child, a part of the man will be in that child. A part of the man. And the only place to find out the part of somebody is in their DNA. So they will conduct the DNA tests. And when they did the DNA test, the judge looked at this woman, man and said, uh, Mr. Jazz says, uh, you are not the father. Broke down in tears. The most painful was the one who had actually been acting as the father, really. Who has been spending money, spending all. Maybe I would, I would, I would, I would get that video. i probably post it. You would see the grief, the pain. I saw men broke down in serious tears because who they thought was theirs was not theirs broke down in tears you can't claim you are a child of god and god cannot be confused about who is his child if you have his dna you are his and the dna of god is what is his spirit so whoever carries the spirit of god 
in their spirit is a child of God. Period. After, after DNA test, no argument again. If we do DNA and discover that 60% of me is in you, where are you running to? You are mine. We don't have to look alike. Sometimes the face does not resemble. Sometimes he's short, you are tall. Sometimes he's fat, you are, you, are, you, are, you are Caucasian. The girl looks African because the mother is African. It doesn't matter the look. If my DNA is in you, I'm your father. Simple. If God's spirit is in your spirit, you are his child. You are. That is the only. That is why. Should I get there? That is why at the end of time, during rapture, there won't be confusion. It cannot, rapture is not like you going to the river with uh, a net and you wanted fish. As you now throw it, you carry barracuda, you carry uh, frog, you carry some snake, you carry the crab. When you now brought all of them to shore, you are now trying to sort them out. It ain't going to happen like that. The only people who will be taken up, the only people who will be changed, even if they are died, before the, that transition takes place, the only person that will be moved is, is the God is just going to use his spirit to pick his spirit. That's all. He can't confuse. You can't use a back door and enter. You can't, you can't, it can't happen. So systemized. His spirit will just unpick what looks like is his spirit. And God's DNA screening machine ca cannot be called. You can't make mistake. It picks it. Second Timothy chapter 2. Is this second? Yes, 2 verse 9. Are you a child or a girl? I'm not too sure. You, <laughs> there's nothing like that. Is it that you are or you are not? The Holy Spirit in you is the assurance that you are a child of God. Nevertheless, somebody say nevertheless. You met the confusion and say, you know, you have been in church, you are a church guy, you even have church language, bless you. You are blessed. Remain blessed. You play the instrument in church. You are like us. You even wear long skirts. You don't even wear your ring. Like. You are really like SU. Yeah. Everything about you. When you pray, you even fold your hands together. Holy God. God. When we worship, you cry. You roll on the floor. Tell your neighbor, say, oh, not drama. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows who those who are is. How does he know? How does he know who are his own? Romans 8 again. Verse 14. How does he know? Because he knows those who are his. Verse 14. For as many as are led, to be led means to be influenced and controlled by the Spirit of God. These are the sons of God. Yes. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself is the one bearing witness. It is called spiritual resonance. The Holy Spirit is sounding a particular frequency, and your spirit can pick it. That's all. The Holy Spirit is a bang. You had your, your, your spirit vibrate bound by a child of God. But those who have not received that spirit in them, when the spirit of God says bram, they know they hear. 
What spirit do they hear? They hear the spirit of the world, the spirit of death and sin. That tells them, go, 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 chase that guy, chase that guy, chase that guy. See, see, see if you go ahead, follow her, follow her. That's something is telling you inside. But if you have the spirit of God in you, that is the seal that God knows you are his. You carry his DNA. And his spirit is what? Is the DNA. Let me move. I think that's clearly understood. Clearly understood. The second thing that the Holy Sp- the seal represents. Very close to finished transaction. Is the proof of ownership. The proof of ownership and authentication authentication I own this I am the authentic owner is this authentic if you buy some product there is an impression they make on it to say that this is the real original so the spirit of God continues to remind us that we are the original children of God. Because as life throws jab at you, the devil wants to bring you to a place of confusion, but the spirit within. So, we don't find our validation from anything external. Our validation is where? Within. The Holy Spirit. is the one validating us. We may not look like it on the outside. We may still be battling with certain things. We may still be dealing with addictions. But the Spirit of God is what? Is in us. Validating that you are my child. I know you are going through it. But you are my child. So a child, the prodigal son, strayed away for years. If they do his DNA test, who is still his father? He has gone astray. God, bra, bra, bra. Who is still his father? And it is that thing in him that brought him back home. He said, even in my father's house, the slaves eat better than I'm eating. I will now go back to my father. He kept on using the word, my father. Not that I will now go back to that man because he is still my father. Let me give you some scriptures. Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 11 and 12. Jeremiah 32. So I took the purchase deed. So I took the deed of what? Purchase. The document that showed that I've purchased it. The sealed copy that contains the contract. So the deed of purchase is what? Is a sealed document that contains the contract and its condition and also the open copy. So there is an open copy and there is what? A sealed copy. Verse 12. And gave them to Baruch, son of Neriah, the son of Messiah. All this took place in the presence of my cousin Anamel and the witnesses who had signed the deed as the Jews who were at the jail that they looked on. What he's trying to say is that the sealed copy that is with him is a proof of what? Ownership of that land that he purchased. So a seal is also a what? A symbol and a proof of what? Ownership. So we have done the transaction. My seal shows that the transaction was already completed. But the seal also shows who who completed the transaction. Do you get the point? So the seal indicates, oh, they have sold this property. It has been finalized. Okay, who, who bought it? 
it is still the seal that will tell you who did what who bought it so it is still shows finalized transaction and what ownership i said a little in passing last week that if, even though it, it happens to us when we we're still much younger and things were not in good shape we used to go and fetch firewood sometimes you go to uh sawmill and we we'll fetch firewood so sometimes we have picked those firewoods and we have gathered them together and having gathered them together we can't carry all home at once so what do we do we will look for some clothes some leaves and gather it and put it on top with a stone when you come there you know that someone gathered this one and this belongs to someone that thing that we place on top what does it mean that is a seal that this thing is owned by somebody so the holy spirit in you is a seal that you are what owned by god romans chapter 4 verse 11 the bible says and he talking about abraham received the sign of circumcision a seal of righteousness of the faith which he had yet been uncircumcised that he might be the father of all them that believed though they be not circumcised that righteousness by be put on him what is the bible saying abraham believed god and the bible says it was counted to him that he was what righteous because the goal is to be righteous before God. So he was righteous. That time that he became righteous in the sight of God, God had not even told him to go and do circumcision. But what would be a proof that as far as you are concerned, I am pleased with you. You are righteous in my sight. How, how, what, what would be reminding you of that truth? Me, I told you you are righteous. But what will be reminding you? I'm going to do circumcision and circumcise all the male children in your house. So, in those days, in those days, anybody that is circumcised is automatically what? Is a child of Abraham. It is a that of Abraham. And as far as that operational system was concerned, they were made, they were what? Righteous. They were the only people in that time that are regarded to as what? the people of God. So, the mark of circumcision was the mark of originality. Before, there is a product that they used to sell. And the way they sell that product, I think it was IPO. If you open it, if you open the container like this, you, as soon as you open it, you are going to come in contact with the IPO immediately. I know that this cover, anybody can construct it and put it. So what is the proof that what I'm buying is really from IPO company? Because any, anybody can look for the container. Isn't it so? And pour his own bleach in the container. And print IPO label and wrap it around it and say what? It's IPO. And cover it. So and when you buy it, listen, you know, when you buy it from the market, what did you buy? IPO. When you started using it, it wasn't giving you the IPO effect. What will you say? Ha, this IPO, they have reduced their quality. Okay. So it is going to affect the image of IPO. Even though what you are using is not from IPO, it's from somebody else. So that IPO will not bear the burden of people that are doing fake. So what did they now do? They now created a seal and put it on top of it like this. Eated seal. That there is no way you will remove that thing and it will not show that you tampered with it. And you cannot get it because it is designed only by them. So even though you open the cover, you will still find the seal. That you even need some strength to do what? To break it. So anybody can claim that, they own, that God owns them. 
by their mannerism, going to go and buy the God container. They went and print God kind of things and put around. And anybody can show. But even when somebody wants to question the originality of your salvation, are you, are you really a child of God like this? What will you do? You just check inside. Spirit of God, they're there. If Spirit of God, they're there. You know, I've seen people who got born again in the 1970s. Most of the time when I interact with them, one of their challenge is that the born again of this our age, child, because in their own born again, when they got born again, there is a, an immediate behavioral modification. First, like my mom will always tell us, she threw away her earring. It's not what I want to pay me the most. She also threw away a straightening comb. Anything that will make you just be looking extraordinarily beautiful is carnality. People down. My father got wedded with wedding ring. As they came out of church, they removed it. Because they just had to use it to comply with the church standard. But they, they are own born again. Damn. So, but in, in our own born again, somebody got born again on Sunday. When he came out to church next Sunday, a guy, he still braided dead his hair. A guy came out and said he born again. And when he still came back next Sunday, he still has one hearing. They look and said, no, you can't be born again. This cannot be what? Born again. How can this be born again? All those things may make you to begin to doubt. True, true. Am I sure I'm born again? I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling the way they are feeling. You know, after maybe they got born again, they just become pious. Got a big Bible. Hang around their hampit. And no, they walk in a particular way. They don't smile too much. Everything is just coded. And you are not like that. And so if you are in their midst, their spirituality, their proper spirituality may make your salvation look not real. But see, that seal of the Holy Spirit is the seal of originality. I am original as original. I am originally saved because if the Holy Spirit which is what God puts in anybody who is saved if the same Holy Spirit is in you is what is in me that's it do you know it was the Holy Spirit that made the Jews actually agree that Gentiles can also be saved Originally, the Jews believe salvation is for them. Because even Jesus, we say it those when he was alive. I am only sent to the lost house of Israel. So in all their thinking, they felt that salvation is what? For the Jews alone. That even when Jesus was telling them, uh, wait for the spirit that you go to Samaria, from, uh, to, from Jerusalem to Judea, to Samaria, to the uttermost part of the day, they did not hear it. I'm telling you, it did not make sense to them. Because they cannot see themselves in uttermost part of the world, preaching to who? The salvation is for what? It's for the Jews. So one night, one afternoon, hot afternoon, Peter had a dream. And then that dream, he saw a sheet placed before him, filled with animals that has been told them according to the law. The animals are impure, and you cannot eat it. Four-footed beasts, animals like pig, animals like duck, they were there. And he heard the voice of God telling him, Take it, eat it. And he told God, I cannot eat it. This is not pure. According to our standard of purity, this I am pure, God. God said, eat, second time. He said, God, this is not pure. According to the standard of purity, this is not holy. God said, eat. Three times, the sheet was removed. Then he heard a knock on his door. And it was people from Cornelius' house. Cornelius was an unbeliever that is a Gentile. So he said, come. Our organ said, we should call you. They gave us the address by the revelation of the Spirit. That you come. So he got there. And as he was preaching, remember the pathway. 
you heard the gospel of salvation, you believed, and you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So as he was preaching to the Gentile people in the house of Cornelius, what happened? They believed in their heart. And as they believed in their heart, without the knowledge of Paul, Peter that they have believed, because Peter did not know they have believed, they are just still listening. Because believing is not written on the face. Even people who say, I believe, may not believe. Because believe is what? Of the heart. So those people's heart believed what Peter was telling them. And without the involvement of Paul, bam, he started speaking in tongues. The same way they spoke in tongues. And remember, the Holy Spirit is the DNA of God. So as they saw them speaking in tongues, <laughs> Peter said, now wow. So these Gentile people don't receive what we get. Because he knew what they got was original. It's the same Holy Spirit in us. It's the same Holy Spirit that is working in them. That's it. That's it. So you may travel to a particular country. And when you get to their country, the male people you to tie up on their chest. And you preach to them and they believe. And they sit tie up around their chest. They are believers. So. You go to a particular country. They live. They live. They live. They, 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 in their own surrounding, as you see what I live here, that's how they have they plant Igbo. And when they are going to the farm, you know, I, I, I read a documentary. When they are going to the farm in the morning, they, they pluck the leaf and chew it. They don't wrap and smoke. They chew, chew the leaf. You now see them. These people I preached to yesterday, they are sitting this Igbo leaf today. And they are not born again. <laughs> if they're born again, if they're born again, they can't be eating Igbo leaf. Because what we are looking for is external behavioral modification, which will still be taking place, which will be happening. But that is not the real proof. That is not the real sign of originality of your salvation. The reason is what? The indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And as soon as the Holy Spirit begins to dwell in you, it now begins to teach you the lifestyle of God. It's not the, it's not you do, it is you that you'll be dropping things by yourself. It is even things that the law of the land does not say is wrong. Even things that everybody believes is right, but the Holy Spirit in you will not begin to teach you the culture of God. It is the DNA of your father that was first in you. You find that acting like your father. Hello? Yes, he's not acting like your father that came first. Even before you were born, the DNA was already in you. Before you started walking, the DNA was already in you. Then when you started walking, they say you're walking like your father. But where did he start? With the DNA. But the day you were born, did he walk like your father? But were you your father's son? Answer me. Good. There are many things that started unfolding in my life as I was growing, that looks like my father. And I said, ah, now wow. For instance, my father, he uses his hand to cut the nail of his, his toenails. He would just sit down like this. Crack, 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 crack. He has cut it. Crack, 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 crack. He has cut it. I would just sit down. I went and bought nail cutter. But I would just sit down. The DNA in me will remind me who son I am. Cre, 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 cre. I've used my hand to cut the nail of my toenails. Is it the way I sit down? I would just look. Say, ah. That's what my father did do. In fact, I was only, I stood somehow, I posed for a picture. When the picture came out, I saw my father. Now, my picture. I saw my father they stand. I wasn't trying to act like my father. The DNA of my father in me is just making me act like my father. We are not trying to act like God. The spirit of God in us is teaching us the culture of God. If you just yield yourself to the spirit of God, you will be like God. They said they saw the believers in Antioch 
And by their behavior, they say these people have been with Christ. They are just living it out. So it is not first of all character modification. It is first of all the life of God, which is the spirit of God, that makes us know that we are owned by him. The last one, which is the, the, the representation of that seal, is for security. Esther chapter 8 and verse 8, from verse 8. Write ye also for the Jews. So this is what happened. You know, there had been a, there had been a, a writing that all the Jews in Shuzan should be killed, which was orchestrated by Aman in the days of Esther. That was why Mordecai ran to meet. Mordecai, Esther was now the queen, the wife of the man who signed it. The man who signed it did not know that he was signing to destroy the, the people of his wife. So I don't even think at that time he knew that his wife was not from Babylon. He thought the wife was from there, but the wife was a Jew. He didn't know. So, after a man's plot has been exposed, remember that if that law that they should kill all of them was signed and sealed by him. And so this is now when they want to repeal the law. Just like what happened in Kano State. That a law was created that suspended an emir and created more emirates. Then another governor came and followed the same process. Created another law. And that law repealed the first law that removed the first emir and brought the emir back and cancelled the other four emirates. That's what the Bible says. The law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus has redeemed us from the law of sin and death. So there was a law before that was in operation. Now, let's see. Write ye also for the Jews as you like. In the king's name. How would they know that this thing was written in the king's name? And seal it with what? With the king's ring, which is a signet ring, which is a seal. Uh-huh. For the writing which is written in the king's name and sealed with the king's ring, may no man reverse. So, whatever is sealed is secured. Whatever is what? Sealed is what? Secured. Your salvation. Which the Holy Spirit came and put a seal on his. That seal shows that your salvation is what? Secure. Your salvation is secured. He said, no man can reverse it. If I put my seal on it, no man can reverse it. So next week, if time permits, I'm going to now answer the question I know is bubbling in your heart. Can somebody lose salvation? Is salvation reversible? The, Holy, the Bible says the Holy Spirit came and put seal on your salvation. So we now went back and checked what seal does. That seal secures something that nobody can tamper with it. Whatever is sealed cannot be reversed. So the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria signed a new national anthem. If you like, don't sing it. That's it. It is it until another person signs another one. As long as that is still the signature, that's it. Is that what we need in this country now? Sing it. Is that the problem that we are facing now? That's the national anthem. We need change the price of Gary in the market. That's the national anthem. I don't even know it. Does it? How do they even sing it? Does it? Why? It is not enough that the two chambers, the lower chamber and the upper chamber, created the law. It is not binding on the citizen until the president appends his signature on it. It now becomes a law. 
I don't want to teach you politics and government. Because there is another caveat that if after 90 days or so, the man does not append his signature, the house can veto it. I say, even though you don't append, maybe you are not append your signature because of a selfish reason. It becomes a law. They can veto it by some arrangement. But that signature shows that that is it. The principal of your school cannot reverse it. Your vice chancellor cannot reverse it. Your village head cannot reverse it. Not even your governor. Your governor may say, I'm PDP, I'm not a PC, therefore, <laughs> that's the national anthem. On any state function, that's what they will sing. You cannot, you may decide not to talk when they are singing it, but that's what will be sung. It has been what? Signed. It cannot be reversed. The only person who can reverse it is the person that is sitting in the office of the president. So the only person that can reverse your salvation is who? The person who put his seal on it. And hear what he said. Hebrews 13. 4 and 5. Marriage is not able to love better than the filed. What among us and rest of God will your best five? Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you are. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I always like the way Amplified put it. I like the Amplified, Amplified it. Give me Amplified, verse 5. Good. See the amplification, man. For God himself said, I will not in any way fail you or give up nor leave you without support. I will not. I will not. I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake you, nor let you down. That means I will not relax my hold on you. Assuredly not. Listen to me. In this journey of your salvation, no be you the old God. Now God, can you hold yourself? Where you come the old God? It's just like when you are holding a child and you are passing through a very terrific environment and you will discover that the, the child will now hold you tight like this thinking that it is that his tiny fingers that is using to clap himself on you that is holding him you lose your grip let him sustain his grip and let's see whether he's still holding you you just lose your grip and let him still grip and see how, how strong your grip on God is so feeble. That's why you have to continually trust in him. That's why he's called the author and the finisher of your faith. Nain statam, nain go finish him. And that's why the Bible says the just will live by faith. What is faith? Just holding on to the fact that he is holding on to you. <laughs> you are holding on to the fact that God is what? Holding on to you. So anything that I want to say, I, say, I know, say God, they hold me, sir. I'm sure God is holding me. You can even look at yourself. If now you, they hold God. You for their year, you, even you, you will have, that is how you hold like this. You hold somebody like this. It gets to a point. You are tired. You are weak. In your mind, you want to still hold. But what happens? Have you not seen it before? When people are caught up in, in, a, in flood. And, they, and what, the wave of the water is passing. And they are in there. And they, have, they see one small rope. And they are holding on to it. In their mind, they really want to cling to it. But as they cling one hour... As they cling two hours and help is not forthcoming, they begin to lose strength. Even though their mind does not want to die, even though their mind wants to keep the old, but you know what happens to you when you sleep? It sleeps off. So the grip falls off. So in this battle of life, in this journey of life, it is God that is holding us. Is the one securing. It is the spirit of God in you that is securing you. That is why when you have seen people who say, 
I'm not going to come to church again. They are born again. Something just happened. Me. Their mother was sick. They prayed, prayed, prayed. The woman died. The following week after the woman died, their father died. After the father died, the elder brother lost his job. And he goes, I'm not, I'm not going to do God again. I'm not going to do church again. God has failed me. No problem. Then you go home. But the spirit of God in you will still be crying, Habba, Father. The spirit of God in you will still be crying, Abba, Father. So one day, we will organize praise night. Say, I'm not going to church. I just want to go and dance. Just dance. Just, I'm not going to church. Just dance. But you go come. Because the spirit of God in you is pulling you back to God. It's not letting you go. If you like, stay away from church for years. In go pull you back. Let's say they couldn't even pull you back to church. Something now eats you. On your dying bed, you will confess God. Or you will return to that God. Because he will, he, he will now be playing some things back to your mind. He will be reminding you of his love. He will remind you of the sacrifice of Jesus. Everything will suddenly now make sense. You see, I forgive God. Have you ever been like that? God will not even talk. Say, so I come back. Say, so I, I forgive God. I forgive everybody. I just, I, I just forgive God. It, it's not you that forgive God. God pulled you back. That is the same thing that happened to the prodigal son. Far away where he was, the fatherness of the father, or the father in him, was drawing him back. I will now return and go to my father. I will now return and go to my father. He's still where he was, so, but that thing was saying, I will now return. I will now return. And he returned. Because the Spirit of God is with securing you. Let's hear it again. Daniel 6, 17. Ah, so I will not finish this lesson today. Interesting. No, I will not finish it. To finish it means I will stretch you. Then a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den. And the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signet of his lords that the purpose concerning Daniel might what? Might not be changed. That's when they put him away, the lion's den. So that was why the only person who can say remove him was the same person that sealed it. As I the following morning, he came there by himself opened it and said, that's the same way when Jesus died, they carried a big stone to secure. So a seal is, a, is an element of what? Security. It secures. You have done the transaction. It shows you are the owner. It also secures you. So when trouble comes in court, it is what you are still going to present to make sure that nobody takes it away from you. That seal is still an object of what? Security. Secures our inheritance. And the Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city and through the midst of Jerusalem. Put a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and cry over the abomination that are done within. Yes? To the other he said in my hearing, Go after him through the city and kill do not let your eyes spare, nor have pity. Yes. Utterly slay all the young maidens, little children and women. But do not come near anyone who has what? Who has the mark? So when the angel of destruction was passing, wherever they put that seal, they were secured. That is why at the end of time, those who have the Holy Spirit in them will not be judged to condemnation. At the end of time, there will be two judgment seats. The judgment seat where God is judging. Everyone who come before that judgment will go to hell. Everyone. The second judgment seat is where Jesus is sitting as the judge. Everybody who comes before Jesus will not stand before God. Why? We are already secured in Christ. 
in Christ, God has already judged us. Because God has judged Christ in his death. So we are in Christ. So that's why Christ will be standing and we are in him. The only judgment that Christ will judge us is to judge our works and give us reward. So every believer's salvation is equal. But our reward in eternity is not the same. Mm. One person cannot forsake all to be preaching the gospel in one interior village where no one can reach. Preaching is suffering attack of snake. Suffering attack of... And last, last, they killed him. And you, you know you are born again. Even though service starts by 8 on Sunday, you stroll in by 10. And by 10, 10 you are already complaining. Service is longer. We can't have the same reward in heaven. I hope you know. You're, that you are saved with the spirit of God in you. We are going to be in the same place. But our reward can't be the same. And the reward system of God is not in the volume of labor. It is a reward according to the labor inspired by love. Said, I will not forget your labor of love. So, what Jesus is using to measure our impute is what? Love. That's why he said, Even if you put your body to be burnt and it is not done out of love, when they put it on that Jesus' scale, it's what? Zero. Zero. You may even give us so much money in this church that we roofed our building. 75 million. Only you. But it's not done out of love. When we get in church, we we in fact we'll give you a special seat. We even give you elder in church because ah, a whole man, 75 million. Let's make him an elder. <laughs> when we get to heaven, if you are not even younger, let alone elder. Nothing to your name. Because that money did not even enter heaven. It's not enter your record. That is why what you do must be spoiled out of love. It is not for competition. It's not for eye service. It's not for showmanship. It is to do what? For love. That is what separates us in heaven. One thing that equates all of us is what? The spirit of God. So we are children of God in the same rank. Inheritors of God, the same level. But the words are not what they say. I am yours. I am your till the day you will come. Jesus, I am your. The only people who are permitted to sing that song are those who have believed in Jesus and they have been sealed by who? By the Holy Spirit. If you have not been sealed by, by his spirit, you are not his own. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth those who are his. Mm, I am your. I am, I am your. Till the day you will come. Jesus, I if you know, sing it with us. I am your. You have the assurance of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. I am your. Till, till the day you will come. Jesus, I am your. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us that we should be called the sons of God, that we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. Ooh, that, that we 
should be called the sons of God. For adventure, you are here this evening, and you do not have the assurance of salvation. You do not have the assurance of salvation. And tonight, the gospel had been preached. And you want to say, Lord Jesus, I open up myself to you today. Come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe you died for me. And you want to make that decision today. Wherever you are, can you just lift up your hands? I'd like to pray with you. Wherever, is anybody like that in church tonight? You don't have the assurance that you are a child of God. Wherever you are, just lift, let me pray with you. Maybe you have been around us. You have been hanging around us. And it looks like we are part of us. But the Spirit of God is not bearing witness with your spirit. There is no assurance in you. Thank you, Jesus. Should be called the sons of God. The second thing that this ownership, which is proven by the indwelling presence of God, tells you is that the devil is walking your life is trespassing so you have the authority to rebuke the devil I said no no you don't hold me I'm no longer under you you can't put me in bondage again and wherever the devil wants to come and lay claim on you maybe there is an ancient something in your family that wants to lay claim on you Maybe there is a pattern somewhere in your family that is trying to spread his influence on you. You now tell that demon, that demonic influence and spirit, tell them that no, I belong to him. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I'm no longer a slave to you. I can't be under your pressure. I belong to God. God now owns me. He paid the price of our redemption. The seal is the Holy Spirit in me. Tell the devil that he does not have influence over your life. He doesn't have power over your life because you belong to him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your power at work in my life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. If you are blessed tonight, put your hands together for Jesus. I didn't hear you. Put your hands together for Jesus. This message is brought to you from Victory Chapel Church on Campus.